Okay, sixth grade, lesson 43. This is on equivalent division problems. And then also we're going to be doing missing number problems with fractions and decimals, okay? <coughs> so let's talk about equivalent division problems. All right? Okay. I'm going to teach you how to do something that kind of makes problems easier. For example, watch this, okay? I'm going to take the number 700 divided by 14, okay? Now, there's an actual way we can do this easier, okay? What's half of 700? Um, What's half of seven? Uh, Three and a half, right? Yeah, but okay. it's not really. Up. Let's do this. I'm going to change the problem. We're going to do something a little bit different for just a minute, okay? Let's do this one. <coughs> What's half of 12? Six. Six. Okay, so what's half of 1,200? 600. Okay, so watch what I'm going to do. 600. What's half of 16? Uh, that's eight. Okay. Did you know that's the exact same problem? <coughs> what? Because you're taking half of that and half of that, it becomes the same answer. Isn't that weird? Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you in just a minute. Okay, so what's half of 600? Uh, 300. What's half of eight? Four. Uh -huh. What's half of 300? Um, 150. 150. What's half of four? Two. Okay. What's half of 150? Uh, 90. Close. 80. 70. Five. Five. Divided by one. Okay. So the answer is going to end up being 75. And I'm going to show you why, okay? So, let's just take, we'll do this problem, and we'll do this problem. See what our answers are. Okay, ready? 600 divided by 8. 8 will go into 60 7 times. 8 times 7 is 56. Bring down my 0. 8 will go into 40 5 times. 5 times 8 is 40. The answer is 0. Got 75 as that answer. Okay, now let's do 150. Divided by 2. 2 will go into 15 7 times. Bring down my 0. 2 will go into 10 5 times. Answer is 75. Oh, Isn't that weird? Because basically you're taking, remember how we were doing like 2 fourths? And we divided both of them by 2. And we got 1 half. That's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You see how the answer is still the same? Because we divided by the same amount each time. So here, I'm taking 600 and dividing it by 2 and getting 308, dividing it by 2 and getting that. I'm just creating new problems, okay? You don't actually have to do this to get an answer. You can just take 1,200 divided by 16. So there's a way that if you keep breaking it down, basically you end up doing it mentally. See how that works? You don't actually have to do it, okay? There's another one. Just like I divided by two, half, uh -huh. I can also multiply, okay? For example, if there was seven and a half divided by a half, this time I'm gonna double it rather than half it. Um, seven and a half and seven and a half, if I double it, would become 15, right? Yep. A half times, a half. or double, a half doubled, which would be a half be times a two would be a whole. So then that's 15 divided by one, which equals 15. See how you can do that? Mm -hmm. So if you see a problem that you can double this and double this <coughs> to get an easier answer, you can do it, okay? Got it? Yep. Okay, it's kind of a little bit, it's kind of weird, but I'm just trying to show you that there is an easier way if you want to, okay? Here's another one, last one. Seven and a half. Divided by two and a half. Okay, let's double them both. Seven and a half doubled, 15, right? Mm -hmm. Two and a half doubled, two and a half plus two and a half. That's uh, five. four. Five. Two and two is oh, four, yeah. plus half and half is five. One more is five. Yeah. Okay, so is that easier to do than that? Yeah. 15 divided by five is three. Well, so is seven and a half divided by two and a half. So you can okay. do this anytime though? Yep. If you notice, ooh, I could double that, and I could double that, and then I could work the problem, it would be easier. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then you can. You can use it. Got it? All right. Now let's talk 
about missing numbers, um, missing numbers, but we're going to be doing fractions and decimals this time. Okay, so take good notes for me. Write this down. D minus 5 equals 3.2. Okay, do you remember when we were learning missing um, subtrahends, missing minuends? Yep. Okay, that's kind of what we're doing, but this time we're going to have decimal numbers in it. So it makes it a little bit harder. Okay, so I'm going to write this vertically. D minus 5 equals 3.2. See how I did that? Okay, am I going to need a bigger number up here to then take away 5 from it to get 3.2? Yeah. I'm going to need a bigger. How do I get bigger? Add. Add. So I'm going to take this and this, the two numbers we do have. So the key is where is the decimal even if you can't see it? Before. At the end. What? You do that every time. It's always at the end because you think about it as money, Eli. Okay. 5.00. This is pretend like $5. Okay? It's not five dimes. That would be five dimes. Yep. Okay? Got it? Decimal's always at the end even if you can't see it. So 5.0 plus... 3.2. Remember, I have to line up my decimals. 8.20. So, I put this back up here. 8.20 minus 5.00. And I should get... There you go. 3.20. Got it? See how we did that? So, the answer to this problem was this. That was our D. D equals 8.20. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do another one. Write this problem down. F plus one-fifth equals four-fifth. Okay? Now, remember, you always look for this. Okay? You always look at your this, your elf, okay? Now, what we're going to do is go, okay, in this spot, do I need a bigger number or a smaller number? Well, let's say I had a bigger number than the, let's, okay, so the first thing you're going to do is look at your biggest number. Four-fifths is your biggest number, right? It has the most pieces, okay? Do I need a bigger amount here uh, to then add plus 1.5 yeah. to get that? Yeah. Or do I need a smaller amount than yeah. this? No. To then add one point bigger, um, bigger. fifth. Bigger? Yeah. So if I had six fifths and then I add plus one fifth, is that going to give me four fifths? No. No, so I need smaller. I need a smaller amount than that. Smaller than that, bigger than the one fifth. Yes. You always oh. look at your biggest number. Yeah, I thought you were saying one fifth. Okay, so we're looking at our biggest number, four fifths. It has four slices. This one only has one. This is our biggest. Do I need something bigger here or something smaller here smaller. to then add one-fifth to it? Smaller. I need smaller. How do you do it smaller? Add or subtract? You subtract. Subtract. So I'm going to take four-fifths minus one-fifths, and I get three-fifths, right? Yep. Because you're subtracting these two, the numerators. Now let's see if that works. Three-fifths. Three-fifths plus one-fifth equal four-fifths? Then we're right. F equals three-fifths. See how we did that? Yep. Okay. One last one. Here's what it says. Solve this. Now, what does this mean? When a, when a number or a fraction is next to a letter, what does it mean? Do you remember? It means to multiply. So this actually says three-fifths times what equals one? Okay, do you remember doing these about two, three weeks ago? What makes the answer one? The when reciprocal, reciprocal. So, be five -thirds. so this answer would be five thirds. Good job. So n equals five thirds. Got it? Mm -hmm. That is lesson 43.